As we approach the day that Jesus Christ, our Savior, died on the cross, I want to spend a few moments meditating with you on two of the seven sayings that Jesus uttered from the pulpit of the cross to an assembly of bystanders, friends, and even enemies. These sayings were spoken on the heels of all that Jesus suffered in, in the ordeal of the cross. Suffered during the, the last hours of his life, from nine in the morning to roughly 3 p.m. in the afternoon. These words expressed his pure and undivided heart. They expressed his deep, deep love for his Father and for his Father's glory and his deep love for you. Many criminals who died by way of crucifixion cursed the day that they were born, cursed their executioners, cursed their mothers even, and they would spit on those who were looking up at them. Some of those crucified would have their tongues cut out because of the vulgarity that came from their mouths. But none of this, none of this was true about Jesus. His heart was pure. So he didn't utter any insults. He didn't utter any threats. There was no vulgarity coming from his mouth. What came from his mouth were these sayings from the cross. Well, what did he say? I want to look at two of the sayings that give you a window into the physical and spiritual agony that Christ endured on that cross. The first saying is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then the saying, I am thirsty. Now, before we look at those sayings, let's remember exactly why uh, Jesus suffered agony on the cross. He suffered agony on the cross because your sins were put on him. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 says, The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Christ... God made Christ who had no sin to be sin for us. So all your pride, all your bitterness and resentment and hatred and selfishness, sexual sins, drunkenness, drug abuse, you name it, your idolatries, whatever they may be, were put on Jesus Christ. And they were put on Jesus Christ by his own Father in heaven. The Father thought of the guilt of your sins as belonging to his son Jesus, your elder brother, as if he were guilty of committing those sins. In other words, your record of sin and disobedience became the record of Christ Jesus. And in light of this, Jesus had to suffer the agony of the cross. When as Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, he became a curse for us. 
The agony that Jesus suffered was both physical and spiritual. The physical suffering and agony of Christ was enormous. Let me just recount, recount a little bit of it. He was struck in the face several times and his beard was ripped from his face. He was flogged across the back some 39 times and deep contusions developed as the whip went across his back, tearing his flesh to ribbons. He was mocked. The men put that robe on him, that royal robe, and they shoved that crown of thorns on his head. They were mocking him. And imagine just how painful it was when they tore that, that robe off his back. He then had to carry the cross beam to Calvary. Well, somewhere along the way, it became far too much for him, too heavy. He was exhausted after all that he had endured. And so a man by the name of Simon of Cyrene was pressed in the service to carry the cross beam of Christ all the way to Calvary. Christ was then crucified. The crossbeam was secured to the stake, and the soldiers then drove the nails into his wrists or into his hand, and then into his feet, into that wooden cross. The cross was then hoisted up, and Jesus hung there, naked, about four or five feet off the ground for everyone to see, in between two guilty thieves. The crucified criminal, like the two thieves that were alongside Christ, usually died of asphyxia. They just couldn't get any oxygen into their lungs. No doubt Jesus pushed up his feet and pulled up with his arms to gasp for air. And every time he did that, he would scrape his already torn back on that wooden cross. And then somewhere along the road here, in a very human way, he uttered, I am thirsty. Perhaps even more painful than the physical suffering was the spiritual agony that he experienced. God caused a blanket of darkness to cover the land from the holy city of Jerusalem to its countryside at, at 12 noon. Darkness in scripture at times means a sign of mourning. Amos seems to indicate that in Amos chapter 8 through 10. It was also, coupled with that, it was a sign of judgment. At the Exodus, if you recall, a plague of darkness spread over the land before the Passover lamb was slain. Now before the death of the ultimate Passover lamb, there again is darkness. Christ was being cursed with the judgment of God's wrath for your sin and mine. Jesus hung there in dark silence, in extreme agony, as the sins of multitudes of his people rolled over his pure soul, hour after hour. At three in the afternoon, Jesus pierced the dark silence with a loud cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words came from Psalm 22, words that David had written and at some point in his life had uttered. And now his greater son, Jesus, according to the flesh, took those words and filled them out in this prayer of lament. 
In this prayer of lament, Christ expressed his deep horror of separation from God while on the cross. When Christ bore your sins on the cross, God, who is of pure eyes and to behold evil, abandoned his son, leaving him in the hands of his adversaries so that he would undergo the full punishment for the sins of his people. Also in these words, Christ was crying out, my God, my God, why is this suffering going on so long? You see, for those six hours, eternal hell came to Calvary and Jesus descended into it and bore its eternal horrors, all in your place. As a result of the agony Jesus suffered on the cross, you and all other believers will never ever suffer or be forsaken by God for your sins. You will never hear those fearful words uttered by God to you, depart from me, you who are cursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Christ heard those words for you and experienced them. So you who trust in him will never hear them. Rather, you will hear words of love and welcome by the Father as he welcomes you into his eternal heavenly kingdom, where you will be the object of his kindnesses for all eternity. Maybe you're listening to me this afternoon or this evening, and, um, and you've never trusted Christ as your savior. Why not today? You know, if you sincerely believe that you're a sinner and that you've offended a holy God and that Jesus Christ suffered and died for you on the cross, if you believe that and, and you acknowledge your sin and you ask God to forgive you of your sin and to give you eternal life, he will. And one day you will hear those words of welcome by the Father in heaven. Welcome into my eternal heavenly kingdom. The words to the song, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed, I think, provide such an appropriate and beautiful response uh, to the agony of Christ on the cross as he suffered and died to pay for your sins. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Was it for sins that I had done, he groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. My God, why would you shed your blood? so pure and undefiled to make a sinful one like me your chosen precious child while might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in. When Christ, the mighty maker, died for man, the creature sin. 
Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my eyes to tears. My God, why would you shed your blood so pure and undefiled to make a sinful one like me your chosen precious child? Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for giving your Son for us to take our punishment on the cross so that we could be forgiven and granted eternal life. Please, O oh God, by your Spirit, work in our hearts so that we are increasingly and sincerely grateful for the cross of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.